Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another Houdini tutorial. My name is Henry and today I'm going to be taking you over how I created these uh, bullets in this Black Lives Matter post that I made um, a few days ago. I got a couple of questions on it and I thought it was a fairly simple thing and you know could be a nice 40 minute tutorial. Um, so let's get started and have a look at how I made this. So uh, the first thing I'll say is I made my bullets myself. Um, if you've got a bullet asset that you want to use go ahead and do that. Uh, there's obviously Video Copilot's assets. There are a whole bunch of other sites that'll sell you uh, CG bullets. So you can go ahead and model and make ones. If you've got specific things in mind. I'm gonna make a very basic one in Houdini. Um, so let's go ahead and drop down a geometry node. Let's call this bullet. And I'll put a line down. So in this thing, I just wanna make sure there's a whole bunch of points along it. Ooh, let's resample the line again. As per usual, probably some of you can see where I'm going with this. I don't need to resample that. I'll define everything in that line node. I just want the curve view attribute here. Uh, put down a wrangle, like so. This will be called set profile. And I'm basically going to create uh, two things. I'm going to create um, a ramp that we can sort of play with and then a multiplier to go on top of that. So let's go float profile equals ramp. Uh, name it profile it's to be based on curve view I'm not going to add any frequency stuff in there because I don't think we need it uh, so that's all good and then another float called bullet which is going to be another parameter called I guess multiply there we go and then we'll say at p dot x plus equals uh, profile times mult I'm going to create both of our parameters here set this to one for now and let's go ahead and make this. You can see how this is working already. The uh, the top end of our line here is uh, uh, act, act, acting most here, I guess. And uh, where it's zero here, um, it's it's uh, on the other end, other end of the line. It's how curve U works. So I'm just gonna generally design some simple profile here. Uh, how do we want to do this? Let's move that up here. Let's give that a value of one as well. And I'm going to move this one down a bit. Something like that. Let's use our multiplier just to bring that in. We don't need anything too mad, I don't think. Um, that's all right. This isn't going to be a super de detail. This isn't like, so it's not going to be super detailed. It's not going to be like a tutorial on how to model a bullet. Um, hopefully, we evolve. This is going to be fairly simple, so we'll grab that. So give us a better idea of if this profile thing's working. Let's maybe move that up a bit. Same with this one. That seems all right. Cool. Uh, let's oops, let's poly extrude it. I can never type when I have to record my screen. It's very embarrassing. Uh, right, let's make this tiny. Oops, Want anything too much? Uh, we'll turn on output back. Just maybe need something a bit more, a bit sharper here. It's okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. This will get. This will do for now. I'm getting too too into it. Um, cool. So that's our main shell. I'm going to create a tube, and I'll plug in this into the first input, what this will do is this will orient our tube around um, around the object like so. So if I reference this on, you can see this is essentially giving us the bounds of our object, which is really helpful because we can uh, we can use it. So I'm going to turn this to polygons. And what I want to do here, I want to set the same value that we have in our revolve into this tube, uh, into the columns. So I'll just paste relative references uh, from our revolve divisions and uh, Give it maybe okay. 30 divisions. Seems all right. Uh, what else do we need? I'm also not quite happy with this. Let's knock that down to. Um, yeah, that's better. I like that a bit more. Uh, cool. We'll put down a polyfill. And we're going to make this just a single polygon. Turn on the patch group. And I'm going to blast away everything that isn't in that patch group. So grab that and delete non selected. Should, yep, gives us that. And then I'll do another blast. 
and I'll just say if your position in Y is greater than 0 0.01 we'll delete you and uh, set that to points there we go so we just want the bottom um, bottom patch there so let's go ahead and make something out of this so I'm gonna go poly extrude and let's do a bit of an inset Not, nothing too spectacular it's pretty good I'm gonna output a front group I'm gonna call this thing front and then we're gonna put down another poly extrude so I'm rushing through this fairly quickly because I don't want to take up too much of your time with it. Uh, so on this one we'll just say the, the group to extrude off is front and we'll extrude that down. Give this another front group. So yeah, front two. Another poly extrude node. Oop. Not like that. And we'll extrude off our front two group like that we're going to output a side group this time just shorten these names it makes them easier to handle and oh well extrude five let's select our side group and just put ourselves a bit of a yeah something like that that's pretty good Oop, scroll down something like that how do these two look together yeah yeah that's all right I'll take that uh, what do I want to do to this I think I'm gonna just put a patch in here actually do I need a patch yeah I do need a patch um, down a polyfill this geometry can look really ugly because I'm just gonna VDB it like I said this isn't gonna be how to model a bullet you can afford to be a little bit ugly uh, okay, so that's all good. So I put down uh, a VDB from polygons, like so. Move that into the first input. Let's make this a bit smaller. That's pretty good. We'll make that even um, even higher res in a second. So I'm just going to right click on it and go actions and create reference copy. And I'm going to wiggle that free and plug it in in this stream and get rid of our merge now. I'm going to do a VDB. Combine. Oops, where did I type it from? Muscle memory. Uh, so VDB combine. Grab that. Grab that. It's all good. And we're going to set this VDB combine in the operation to SDF union, like so. And that should be pretty good. I'm just going to up. Uh, so the reason I created a reference copy is because these parameters will all be um, all be linked uh, to this one. So I can just go ahead and say, hey, make this. And 025 and it will do the same for the other one so let's see how that looks uh, let's put down uh, convert VDB like so set this to polygons yeah, this doesn't look too bad uh, we can up the adaptivity a little bit something like that like I said not a tutorial on how to model a bullet um, but hopefully this is you know all right for what you need um, so that's all good. I might make this bullet a tad thicker. Let me make this 0.1. Bit too thick. I should probably look up some reference if I'm being honest, but let's go with that. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to put down a null and just call this our out bullet. It's going to be really simple. Okay. So uh, there's a couple of things I want to do here. Um, the first is I want to. Uh, obviously set the sim up for everything to be dropping and the other one is I just want to make uh, some nice materials so I'm going to be using Quixel bridge for this and in my original um, in my original scene I used these three materials you've got the the brass material the iron material and the worn concrete floor which I use for the ground um, you can go ahead and uh, import these or you can use your own materials if you want to use those um, I'm gonna literally just download them uh, or copy them uh, out of my old scene um, because I don't want to have to wait for them to download again. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab those. Sorry, if you can't see what I'm doing, I've got my other scene here. Uh, so I'm just going to jump into my material context. Should be able to paste those down. Hopefully. Uh, okay, I'll need to reconnect the albedos. 
So there's my brass, there's my iron, and there's the concrete floor. Cool. So if you use the um, the Quicksilver Bridge plugin, you just need to open this up. Mega Scans plugin. I'm just using triplanar material types, um, so nothing special. Um, you can just go ahead and hit export, and these will will export. But I don't want to have to do that on camera because that's an extremely laborious process. So what I'm going to do is I want to basically create some sort of uh, some masks to blend between the brass and the iron materials on the bullet, and I'll just give it this sort of, I guess, more of a worn look. Um, let's go and put down a point vop. And maybe it's best if I demonstrate this on a grid first, and then we can apply it to our to our bullet. So let's put down our grid. Uh, I'll make it a bit smaller so it's a bit more in line with what our bullet is. Smith 100 by 100. And dive inside to that point vop. Let's make sure the display flag's turned on. So I'm going to do a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down an anti-alias noise. And set this to a three-dimensional uh, output. Where are we? 3D input, 3D noise. Perfect. And an add node. Uh, plug our position into the add, and then our position into the AA noise, and the AA noise into the second input of the add. Then I'm going to put down a Voronoi noise. For those of you who've done any fracturing before, you'll recognise what this uh, what this might look like. And then I'm going to put down a random node at the seed. And let's plug that into color and see what it gives us. Okay, so this has given us some nice sort of patchiness to work with. Um, the reason I've done this is essentially because if we were to just plug in, if I bypass this add, if we just plug up position in here, it's going to create this very kind of standard uh, Voronoi pattern, which is fine, but I don't like these hard edges. Um, and certainly if we were to render this, which we will, um, with all the hard edges, it's going to look a little bit to CG. Um, so what I'm doing is is adding uh, noise to the position, and that's just breaking this up a little bit. We can come in, we can come in here and mess with this to create some different looking uh, noise. We can play with the roughness uh, and whatnot just to try and and break those surfaces up. Um, I think it's a useful technique. I use it a lot with noise. I think noise of noise patterns become very recognizable. Uh, so I use this fairly frequently. Um, the other one I'm going to do is I'm going to put down, uh, no, not turbulent, I'm going to put down another ah, anti-alias noise. And we'll plug that, in fact, I'm just going to put down a bind um, and bind, bring in position. So this just brings in all of the globals here. Um, I'm using a bind node just to bring position in specifically so it's a bit cleaner. I'd have wires going everywhere. So we're going to use the anti-alias noise. Uh, I'm going to put down a fit range in here and this will um, allow us to remap these values and then I'm going to use a float to vector like so. I'm going to plug this into all three inputs because I want this to be picked up into its own vector and I'll plug that into the frequency. And this is basically going to change the frequency of this Voronoi noise. So before we did this it was completely um, well, fairly even in terms of its frequency. In fact, it, it was even. Uh, these cells are all roughly the same size. If I put some noise into the frequency, it really breaks that up. Um, I don't want this to be at zero though, or one. So let's uh, put this to maybe 0.4. And maybe we'll go even higher. Let's go one here, or let's go 0.8 and 1.2. Get some contrast in there. So you can see we're getting cells now that are a bit smaller. I can show off. Uh, Show this off a bit more. So one here, three here. You can see we start to bring in some much smaller pockets into this, and I think this is a good way of breaking stuff up. So let's use that. This looks pretty nice, and this can go into our color. Um, really, I want to bind export something uh, that I can I can use like a, a mask. So I'm going to just call this thing mask. It's a float type. So that's all good. So we're going to basically apply this onto our bullet. Um, one thing I would um, recommend, actually, that I've, I've used a fair bit is uh, Adrian Lambert's uh, Mask Builder, uh, AL Mask Builder. You can buy this off his Gumroad for like a fiver. It's really cheap, and you can mask by all sorts of things, curvature, noise, object, um, slope. There's a whole bunch of things that are really helpful in this node. Really recommend that. Um, but let's just... Uh, use this for now so call this build mask 
and let's just set some of these parameters up. We can promote these, so I'll say promote the destination min and max. That's really the ones I'm worried about in this case. Um, so how do we want to do this? Let's make this maybe three. That already looks pretty good. Something like that. And then, yeah, so let's just stick with that. That seems fine. Cool. Uh, do we want to visualize this as color? Probably not. Let's just get rid of that. Okay. So we've built our bullet here. I think I'm going to just scale it a little bit. Um, let's put this mask here. And then I'm just going to scale this down a bit. No, if I put this transform underneath here, I'm just going to plug that back in. If we, when we scale this down, it's not going to affect the, uh, the size of the noise. So I'll make this... 0.4 is what I had in my original scene, I think. Um, yeah, this is still going to apply the same mask. So, okay. Uh, I'm just going to scale down. One, scale down. There we go. Um, that's all good. Let's start making this into something uh, a bit more dynamic. So, I'm going to put this uh, transform down. And I'm just going to stick this up here. I'll rotate this by 90 degrees. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, we're not going to see the bullets actually coming out of a gun. We're just going to see them rattling against the floor. So something like that's pretty good. Uh, let's put down an assemble node. And this is basically going to build a name attribute on our bullet. Uh, create pack geometry there. One thing you might want to do is if you have a um, if you have a bullet model that has multiple pieces, ours fortunately just has one. Uh, sort of combined surface because it's a PDB thing, um, you might need to find a way of assigning the whole bullet one name rather than three or four, otherwise it's, it's not going to understand uh, and you're going to have to either get into constraint networks or a bunch of other stuff. I'm just assuming the bullet is one thing uh, in this case. So let's put down a dot .network, if again I can spell dot .network, I'm going to call this bullet sin. I know the engine we use to simulate rigid bodies these days is uh, is bullet, so it's a bullet bullet sim. Try not to think about it. Um, <laughs> let's put down an RBD packed object and a rigid body solver. We're going to need a ground plane. I'm going to grab as a merge and a grab as gravity. And what I want to see now, so let's just make sure these are plugged in the correct order. Ground plane goes first. Gravity goes second. And that should be good. Cool. So let's just set this geometry source to our first context geometry. And I like to hide the ground plane. Spare that. And let's just turn off the visualization because I don't need any more. We know we've got the mask attribute. So let's run this, see what happens. Okay, that's pretty good. Nothing too fancy, didn't need to be. We might want it to bounce a little bit more. I think that's something a bullet would be prone to do, at least in my mind that is. Um, see. Oh wow, that's that's definitely too much. Uh, for those of you who have fired guns, yeah, that's that's probably probably not how they work. That's pretty good, maybe a little bit less. Feels a little bit jelly-like, 0.75. I'm just changing this on the ground plane, by the way, if you didn't see that. Something like that's pretty good. It's nothing too special. It just sort of think and does its thing. Um, okay, that's all fine. Um, one thing I might want to have a look at is the bullet data. So what this is going to do is it's basically going to, if you've ever seen the shrink wrap node or the, what's that, I forget what it's actually called, convex hull, I think is the name of the node. Oh, no, it's called straight shrink wrap. I think you can do exactly the same thing with convex hull. Yeah, it does the same thing. Um, so what this is essentially going to do is it's going to wrap our, our bullet like this. And we're going to use a volume version of this to calculate all of the collisions. So this is fine. If you want to have thousands and thousands and thousands of bullets rattling off, you might consider turning this to a cylinder. And you can see uh, what that's going to do. It's going to wrap a cylinder like we did um, when we modeled the bullet onto this thing. The downside is you're not going to have... Um, 
you're not going to have all of the sort of nooks and crannies accounted for so you might see a little bit of weirdness here and there especially if you've got a an angle on your bullet um but this it might be a good option for you if you really need thousands of primitives it'll be a lot less expensive to calculate that primitive but uh, i'm going to stick with convex hull for now this doesn't look too bad and then if we we need to go to cylinder we will uh so we'll turn that off that's all good right so i'm happy with that that's fine um one thing we might want to do is we might want to give this a sort of uh, a bit of initial velocity so let's set that up um, I don't think it needs anything too special. I'm just going to say uh, at v equals. Uh, we could do this with a parameter. I'm not going to bother. Uh, so set 0.5 in x, 1 in y, 0 in z. See what that does. Uh, I just need to make sure in our rigid body packed object that under initial state we've turned on inherent velocity from point velocity. Yep, and you see I just gave it a bit of a nudge. We might want to put a malt on this. So let's. Uh, There we go. Semicolon at the end. Stop that from playing. That sets our parameter. Okay, that's good. So let's make this maybe five. You see, it gets flung over a bit more. I don't know if we need it to be that aggressive. I just want a little something that kind of kicks it into the air. Oh, need to turn on that display flag. I'm going to just turn. Uh, on the object on our, our dot network, I'm just going to type star rbd star or asterisk, uh, and that's just going to pull any object uh, in here with the with rbd anywhere in it. So this has rbd in it. None of these do, so it won't pull them through. Uh, it'll just show us the rigid body object. Uh, that's pretty good. We can fine tweak the the bounciness of that bullet, um, but that's pretty good as a test for now. So. Uh, let's call this uh, set initial velocity. It's all good. So I want to have more bullets feed into this. I don't need them all to be present at the same time, so I'm not going to just create a massive grid of them. Uh, I'm going to do something a bit different. Let's pop down a multi solver. Like so, we'll plug our rigid body object into here, disconnect it from the rigid body solver plug that in here and then the multi solver into gravity and this should still work just with the one bullet so there's no trouble there what I'm going to add in next is a sop solver into this uh, this input here as well and we're going to call this uh, create more rounds I don't know, something like that let's dive inside here and I'm going to put down an object merge and uh, what else do I need? I need, I believe, no, I need a point wrangle or an attribute wrangle. The difference is is negligible. They you tell it what it runs over here, unless it's like a volume wrangle or a um, or a deformation wrangle or something like that. But uh, no, you should be should be absolutely fine. So what do we got? Uh, let's put this down. Let's put down a transform. And how am I going to set that up? I'm going to go into the pivot. I'm going to go dollar C X, dollar C Y, dollar C Z. Oops, C Z. There we go. And this is basically going to put the pivot at the center of whatever we object merge into this, which you may have guessed is our is our bullet. Uh, so let's do that. Let's grab uh, the out bullet here, and we're going to grab an assemble slot. If I can type, oh. Uh, turn on create pack geometry so this is all good um, this is gonna this is gonna bring in our um, our bullet it's gonna do some transform that we want to, to do to it here uh, so we're gonna need to set that and then it's gonna pack it which is exactly what we want where did we set that up upstream okay we set this thing over here uh, I'm gonna just wiggle that free I'm gonna plug don't need that I'm going to plug that uh, that in here so it, it picks up this uh, this initial height so they're all kind of the same um, that's pretty good so we've got our bullet it's moved it up here and we can see that 
this uh, dollar C X Y Z thing has um, has put the pivot in in the center. So I'm just going to set this to dollar F times ten like that, and you can see over time this is just going to rotate the bullet now. What this will mean is that all of our bullets are kind of coming in at, at different angles, which I kind of think works in terms of the result we're looking for. Obviously, if this was coming out of a gun, you wouldn't want this rotating in a mad way because bullets don't come out of guns like that. Um, but uh, in this case, I think it works. So we've packed it. Now we need to name it. Now, normally the naming would, would happen within an assemble salt where it kind of... Um, it would essentially name your object and give each uh, piece it packed an appended number. Um, we need to solve that. We need to we need to solve that ourselves here because this is feeding in one thing. The assemble salt reads it. It goes, "Oh, your piece one," and the next thing comes in and it goes, "Oh, your piece one as well," because it only sees one thing at a time. I actually, say piece zero, but another another problem. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in here and connect this into our dot geometry here. And we're basically going to let's just say set name. Uh, like that. We're going to tell this how to pick up its name. So I'm going to say s at bullet. S at, what am I talking about? S at name equals bullet. Uh, put an underscore so we can see the numbers. And then I'm going to plus i two a because we're going to need to concatenate this into a string. Use this endpoints expression, and we can just feed one. In here to get the first input in here so this is zero one two three these four four knobs on the top here um, so we want the first input so it's going to take the number of points in here so at any point in our simulation how many um, how many objects are in there we don't we want to make sure that we name based on that so we're going to do that plus one so it's always going to be one ahead of the number of bullets in our, uh, our rigid body network close it off with a bracket we're just going to set an active attribute on there, so I'll say set active uh, at active equals one. Just make sure they will move, and then that'll merge back in with our dot geometry. I'll put down an output here. I'm just going to call this thing or we'll set sim attributes. That's better. Okay, so now, come back here. This should feed a new bullet, and you can see it is, into our sim at every frame. And I can actually see how that rotation's working. It's not too bad, actually. Um, but I think we can do better than this. I think we need to. Uh, a, we want to kind of determine the firing rounds, or the, the, sorry, the, firing, the rate of fire, I guess, uh, on the bullets themselves. And I think we want to set some initial velocity so they don't just fall. Like this one's got something uh, that I think we need to, to give these. So let's set that up uh, here. So set uh, velocity. So we're going to say, uh, how do we want to do this? At V equals set. What do we have? It's 0 0.510 was our, our thing. And then let's do multiply by, give me a... Ooh, um, Give me a random value based on at frames. It's going to pull our frame number in. And then so it's this random uh, function returns a value between 0 and 1. So we'll say user fit 0, 1. So we already know what its min and max inputs are. And we'll say this can go between 1 and 3, maybe. I don't know. That might be all right. Uh, so we've got our, our name set, we've got our active attribute set, we've got our velocity set. So these should all now start moving slightly differently. Oh, we're still in here, that's why they're not. We need to go out of here to actually see an update. And there we go, okay, so they're all firing, they're still firing every frame. So it's a bit mad and they're intersecting and we don't like that. But they're all now kind of firing out in a, in a way that we like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down an enable solver here and I'm going to use this to um, to break up the rate of fire. And the way I'm going to do that is with a modulo expression. So I'm going to say, uh, what do I want to say? $F, which, you know, enable solver here, here. we're going to say $F uh, modulo 4 
equals zero. So what this should return is every four frames. Doesn't look like it is. Did I type that in right? Oh, double equals. Sorry, ignore me. There we go. It's going to go ding, 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 ding. And we get a rate of fire as a result. Okay, so I've gone ahead and flipbooked the, this animation out, and I'm pretty happy with this. I think this will work fine for what we need. Um, let's go ahead and add some of the extras in that, that uh, we're going to need to make this work. So I'm going to put down a null. So, so let's call this thing sim. So we're going to render. And let's create a ground. Need to be anything special. Uh, it just needs to be at the same height as our ground plane, which it is by default. So that's fine. I'm going to put a camera. Oops, put a camera down. So I don't know what to go for for this. Maybe I don't want to see any of the uh, the bullets appearing in thinner. So maybe we'll go for something like this. I'm going to set this to 1920 by 818, which is a 235 crop which I'm an absolute sucker for, I have to admit. Something like that. So that's pretty good. Let's name this thing. Shot cam. And let's, what do we need to do? We need to get some lights in here. So I'm gonna put down an environment light. And for those of you who have seen any of my tutorials before, uh, you'll know I have um, some HDRI stored away in the HFS directory. Uh, you will have, um, uh, these three from side effects so go ahead and use those or plug your own thing in doesn't really matter um, what can we use here that might be all right maybe maybe that it's kind of cool um, and we'll grab an area light uh, let's actually do that from the shelves untick that and I want to kind of use this to catch some of the lights so something a nice highlight on there let's use maybe an area light from here to the shot cam and again anyone who has seen any of my past tutorials knows I have uh, some texture maps that I like to use again in the HFS so I created my own thing called LGT and this is from Video Copilot's backlight um, pack which is really useful you just rip all the files out of the element 3d uh, launcher and away you go uh, I'll grab that single light these are actually HDR files um, I know some people have picked up on that. <laughs> I will put the, the proper ones in. Um, so that looks all right. Uh, we've got a shot cam. What else do we need? We need materials. Uh, and I already copied those in. Um, again, you can use the the, uh, the Quixel Bridge Megascans plugin just to bring these in. Uh, so how are we going to do this? Uh, let's set the floor up. There we go, ground. One concrete floor fairly simple and then on the bullet we want to do a layer mix so we're gonna put down a layer mix and we're gonna connect the layer outputs into A and B respectively here and then we'll put down a bind and bind in our mask attribute like so so let's call this bullet shader and you won't find this in the menu here, which is really annoying, but you can type it and it will work. So the mat uh, bullet shader. And that should all work. Uh, let's pop into our out context and put down a mantra node. Let's make sure this renders from the shot cam. And I think that's everything we need. Uh, let's go ahead and render this. Now my computer is hellaciously slow. Uh, so I'm going to speed this bit up. I will see you when it starts rendering. Okay, so we can see this is all working and I immediately want to make a few changes. I want to change up the lighting. So let's uh, dive into this environment light. I'm going to knock that down a fair bit. Might even go more than that. Yeah, something like that. I just want this to be like a very sort of vague um, 
sort of it only just being there to be a very soft illumination. Uh, then in this area light, uh, I'll make this a touch smaller. So it's like kind of wide up here. And then let's make that more aggressive. And again, that's going a bit too far. Something like that feels all right. See all of our our mask is, is coming through. I might want to to tweak that a little bit. We can go ahead and um, color correct the albedo a little bit as well. I, I sort of want to try and pull out more of that that bronze look uh, out. So let's let's do that here uh, in the brass rather. So put down a color correction node. Connect there in here. And let's stop that. And I'm going to just up the saturation a little bit. Nothing too heavy. Phone's going mad. Oh, that needs to go into base color. This is what happens when you're on your phone all the time. You never pay attention. Um, <laughs> sound like a really awful school teacher. Okay, that sort of helped to, to just bring a bit more out in them. I think I want to change the mask slightly. I think I want smaller details on this because you can kind of see they're a little bit big. And I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, so let's uh, let's just dive back in here and change this, uh, this mask up a bit. So let's dive in here. Let's, uh, let's dive in here and here in fact we don't even really need to be in here we just need to make this bigger so let's do 6 by 10 don't have to resim this uh, normally just give me a second there we go and hopefully that's a marked improvement Yeah, this looks a bit better. I'm a fan of that. Okay, cool. So I'm going to do a couple of things before we go in to the final render. Uh, let's. What do we want to do? Let's go into our mantra node and set a couple of things up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, need to go into extra image planes here. And I'm going to turn on depth, and I'm going to go into here. I'm going to turn on combined lighting per light. So what that's going to give me is the ability to tone down each light in comp, to grade them separately, and then plus them back together. Um, it's also going to give me depth to do depth of field, or some just um, what I did in my original example was I had some uh, some haze that I graded in. Um, but I think that's uh, that's definitely worth it. Okay, so now we've got our depth, we've got the environment light and the area light as separate things. And we can grade them in and, and kind of tweak uh, at comp stage if we want to want to do that. So that's all looking pretty good. Um, I think one more thing we need to do is turn on motion blur. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to allow motion blur in the render node and we need to turn on uh, under the render tab sampling turn on velocity blur here which we'll get from the bullet sim or the bullet bullet sim and I'm going to call it that bullet bullet sim okay so now we've got motion blur turned on uh, there's one more thing I want to do with this before um, before we go into final render and I'm just gonna do it now I'm gonna pop in here onto our concrete material and I just want to knock that back a bit I think it's a bit too bright uh, for what we want. We want those bullets to kind of stand out uh, against the background. They're already fairly bright because of that specular shine. I just want to knock it back a bit more. Um, so we're going to do that. So let's just come in here. I'm going to, what are we going to do? Let's gain it back ever so slightly. See what that looks like. 
yeah i think on the whole that's a bit better that's just kind of helping us uh, helping our bullets pop on the uh, the image a bit more so i'm going to go ahead and render a full res frame of this and we'll come back and review and then we'll probably call it there uh, i'll see you guys in a second Okay, so uh, I went up and uh, went ahead and let the renders finish. One thing I did do was up the pixel samples because uh, it was getting a, quite a bit grainy uh, over here uh, and it still could be improved, but I'm not going to hang around for hours to, to wait for this to finish up. Um, yeah, I mean, this is basically it. This is uh, how I created my original piece here um, was grading the bullets out a little bit differently, but really that's all it was. The only thing I've done that's of any real substance in comp is just, just grade in a bit of uh, haze using uh, using this depth pass, um, and that's really made all the difference. But you can see here we've got all of our lights individually uh, captured so we can play with those. Um, we've got ourselves depth uh, in this so we can use that as I said to, to grade in some haze or to uh, do some depth of field depending on how you want to make your piece look um, but yeah I hope you've enjoyed this I hope it's been useful uh, to some people um, I'd love to see any results you come up with if you follow this or use your own bullets or, or do something uh, do something unique uh, with it um, but yeah uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and again go and support in your local area the Black Lives Matter movement it is an incredibly important thing to support um, now and always. Um, but until next time, I've been Henry Medhurst and I will see you soon. Take care, guys.